Hi everyone, welcome back to Mere Talks Wastewater. Today we're going to be looking at regulatory frameworks in wastewater engineering. I think that regulatory frameworks and wastewater engineering go hand in hand. The legislation dictates what can and can't be done in terms of wastewater treatment, and advances in wastewater engineering technologies are what drive changes to legislation. Therefore, regulation is extremely important in the development of better wastewater engineering practices and vice versa. One thing I think that should be noted is that regulations need to be updated regularly to allow for the innovation of new and better treatment processes. But firstly, let's have a look at how legislation has affected wastewater treatment over time. So here's a brief history of wastewater regulations. Up until around the early 1970s, treatment objectives were concerned primarily with the removal of colloidal, suspended and floatable material treating biodegradable organics and eliminating pathogenic organisms. Following this, there was a change in focus to aesthetics and the environmental impact. Earlier objectives were increased to higher standards and they included the reduction of biological oxygen demand, total suspended solids and pathogenic organisms. The removal of nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus also rose in importance. Nowadays, the emphasis on constituents that may cause long-term health and environmental impacts. I think that the changes in regulation have come about because people have an increased awareness of the environmental effects caused by wastewater discharges. For example, here in Perth, we hear a lot about the detrimental effect that wastewater has on our environment through the media when discharge overflows into the Swan River. I also think that the changes have occurred because there is a greater appreciation of the adverse long-term effects caused by the discharge of some specific constituents, and also a greater concern for the protection of the environment. This has led to changes in legislation which have been reflected in wastewater treatment processes. Over time, the required degree of treatment has increased significantly, and additional treatment objectives and goals have been added, demonstrating how closely related regulations and wastewater engineering practices are. So, by now you might be asking, what does the future hold? If regulatory frameworks and wastewater engineering, pro wastewater engineering practices are so closely tied, then surely we'll see this trend continue into the future. Firstly, I think the removal of more environmentally damaging constituents should be incorporated into the legislation. Right now, Few parameters require monitoring. These include E. coli, biological oxygen demand, suspended solids, pH, turbidity, disinfection, clostridia, and coliflages. I think that any constituent with the potential to adversely affect ecosystems should be required to be removed during the treatment process. And although this may sound like an impossible task, and I know that it might be, I think that we can start by identifying ones which have the most significant impact on the environment and trying to get rid of these ones first. A perfect example of this is oestrogen, as was discussed in last week's blog. An opportunity for improvement would be to set limits on the amount of oestrogen allowable in wastewater discharge in order to minimise the effect on fish populations. This would force wastewater engineering to develop treatment processes that, which can remove these constituents. This change in legislation would improve wastewater engineering practices and improve the environment, particularly ecosystems in discharge zones. Secondly, I see a future with innovations in on-site wastewater processing, which will reduce the need to expand current wastewater treatment plants and to build new ones. Hopefully these units will be able to treat water to secondary quality and reduce nutrients so that it can be used for non-potable uses. The key challenge, We'll be addressing the strict legislation to make this an easier and less costly option, as well as ensuring health and safety issues are not created. To read more about this idea, read my blog below. Let me know what you think. Do you agree that re regulation and wastewater engineering go hand in hand? Or do you see different ways forward? Thanks for listening and tune in next week for my next fascinating topic.